You're listening to Comic Reflections, episode 112. I'm your host, Nicholas Prom. And I'm Jeff Barnard, the pesky imp who comes to Earth time to time to drive Superman batty. Which <laughs> means it's mixed pedalic time. Yay! Which is my favorite time of any year. So. Okay. Um, so, <laughs> Comic Reflections is brought to you by Rhymes with Geek. You can check out our show, plus plenty of other cool podcasts like Super Podcast of Magnifico, the all know fan, anti fanboy, Feed It Comics, and loads of others at rhymeswithgeek.com. And if you enjoy our show, please don't hesitate to subscribe to us on iTunes or Stitcher. Okay. Our first um, issue today is Mystery Mission to Metropolis. Yes. This is Superman number 281. Um, Kerry Bates wrote the story. And the art is penciled by Kurt Swan, inked by Bob Oxner. Yeah, all right. The splash page. We have Superman and Vartox. Uh, Vartox. He, and Vartox looks like Sean Connery, Sean Connery from um, Zardoz. Which I meant to watch that this week, and I forgot. Oh, it's a jury science fiction movie. And it's, uh, I'm not going to spoil the movie for people. I guess it's worth watching. It's kind of interesting, but... I really like science fiction films of the 1970s. And so Until I, Star Wars. Yeah. Because before Star Wars, and I'm quoting oh, uh, James Lalex, is that there all the science fiction movies were dreary and it's, and Earth is destroyed. Or Yeah, they were good. And and, uh, um, and they all had Charlton Heston on them. <laughs> <laughs> but then Star Wars, hey, science fiction can be fun. Yeah, and, and that's why it was popular and did so well. Well, right, but I think Star Wars is a fun thing. But in a way, it's cheapened like science fiction into just a shoot 'em up thing that's set in outer space. You know, or it brings it. I know it's going back to the serials. You know, the Flash Gordons, mm -hmm. and but I like to think of. I want my science fiction to be like Frank Herbert stuff or uh, Harlan Ellison. It's, it's more cerebral. Lousy. Well, Dune is one of my favorite books. But and it made the, a great uh, movie. That movie is wonderfully bad. It's just I hated it when it came out, but now it's loads of fun to watch because it's so over the top. Not it's not doing the book. And the I watched the um, science fiction channel. Mm -hmm. Does it even have science fiction on there anymore? I don't know. I think it's just dose and stuff like that. But um, it's just kind of boring and uh, just I don't know. Maybe I need to watch it again. I don't know. Um, but um. I don't yeah. know, you can't blame Star Wars for that. Although, after Star Wars, we had Aliens. Alien and yeah. Aliens, which yeah. are a fine science fiction movie. Yes, they are. And we had... Um, it's who well, there was there. Enemy Mine in the, thing, the 80s. Yeah, I love the, that one. The Thing. Oh, The Thing, yeah, that's a great one. Um, and um, we had... Uh, oh, Harrison Ford and... Oh, Blade Runner. Blade Runner. And see, those, I think, are more classical science fiction in the in the vibe that I like them. I'm not saying Star Wars killed science fiction, but it kind of kind of did. those movies without Star Wars. Though. Do you think it took it you you're saying that because Star, Star Wars was a hit, studios said were more willing to take risks and make more science fiction right. movies or ah. and spill and spend money on them. Mm. And that's another big deal. And the yeah. hire a good writer, a good, good director, have good effects. Yeah. And um yeah. I mean cuz I think that there's like they have cool sets normally and kind of maybe goofy con I think look at like Logan's Run. Yeah. It's you know, it's a good movie but like backdrops are painted stuff or whatever. Um there's a lot of grandeur in that movie. It looks like an old Hollywood movie. Um, yeah. um, it's like a Busby Berkeley without the musical numbers, almost. And being a downer. <laughs> so. Yeah. Well, no, but things are come up roses in the end of Logan's Run. Do they? Yeah. You haven't seen it in a while. Yeah. Anyway, but I... Run, Runner is about the only thing I remember. Yeah. And it was a I TV know. show, too. Yeah, and I didn't see the TV show. It was one yeah, other one of those one-seasoners. Yeah. But... Uh, Anyway, uh, Rollerball is another good one from the 70s, too. I love that. Yeah, that's pretty fun. The dystopian science fiction. That was the whole tone of science fiction in the 70s. Right. And um, the we lost thing. something, but we gained something with Star Wars because we didn't get any of the, the dystopian stuff went away. 
Um, but we also got more science fiction movies. Right, but before Star Wars, all we had was dystopian. And now we have quite a dystopian while. and good and other yeah. stuff and fun stuff. Yeah, and the dystopian thing has come back around. Now that's like the trend in science you know, fiction. With zombies and stuff like that. Yeah. So. Okay. Let's okay. Go. So, Superman. Mystery Mission to Metropolis. All right. Um, we have a great splash break. Well, um, Bartox looks like Zardoz. Um, <laughs> man, okay. He's wearing a male bikini and a vest. And you can see his hairy chest. And he's got a mustache. A receding hairline and a porno stash. <laughs> so that's so that's what and a really big high boots and that's what Zardoz or Sean Connor looked like in Zardoz. Yeah. Sean Connor is not Zardoz. Zardoz is a, a mystery. I try to know, but I will not tell you. Thank you, you because I really do want to watch it. Mm -hmm. So all right, so um. We have a prologue. Yeah, we do. Um, we see a, a um, there's a robbery, and this um, nasty guy is robbing this young girl at a Rosie's cafe, and she hits the buzzer, an alert buzzer, which makes a sound, and so everyone knows that there's a robbery there. That's not a silent alarm. It's definitely just an alarm. So the guy guns her, shoots her down in cold blood. And then this um, woman in another world dies too. And we see a picture of Zarda. I'm not Zarda. Vartox. <laughs> Vartox. I'm going to call him Zarda. It's Vartox's <laughs> wife. Right. Because this girl and the girl on Earth were like psychically linked somehow. Mm hmm. And so. Yeah, so. Um, so Zarda. I'm going to say it too. <laughs> Vartox is sad and he's, he's got a. He's going to seek for justice. Now, on his world, he is like the Superman. He is the great superhero. He can fly and do all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Oh, so they look, so he takes her to the scientist, and they have a topsy scan. A scan. A topsy. Oh, can't even pronounce the name. Autopsy scan. Yeah. How hard is that? It's Real hard. hard. Okay. It's a hard word. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but, but, man, that's one of the stupidest looking things ever. It's well, a big globe with things sticking out of it and aiming at stuff. Uh, well, I figured that you'd be into it, to be honest. You like all this futuristic looking stuff. Yeah, but I like it look good. Not okay. <laughs> so. So. Okay. So, um, so, well, they figure out that he is, uh, she had, his wife, his ex, ex uh, late wife, had a bionic twin, which I had never heard bionic used this way. Right, usually you mean it like you've got robot parts in you, yeah, but it means something stronger. And, yes, and whatever, so. it means something different in this context. Mm -hmm. So anyway, her twin on Earth, they're connected, their lives were connected, so the twin on Earth dies, she mm -hmm. dies, and it would have happened, had that the reverse happened, the Earth girl would have died. Um, yeah, okay, so... So yeah. Vartox wants to go to Earth and bring the killer to justice, right. but so, he knows there's Superman. Right, because he, he looks into... Uh, the scan scope with the boost miss hypervision. I'm not sure what hypervision is. It's like it's probably like his uh, Superman's uh, mm -hmm. X-ray vision. So he sees, oh, look, here's a uh, super powered crime fighter, much like myself, Superman. How does he know his name? Powers. I don't know. So. So he's thinking about it, and then he comes by and he meets Superman because Superman's been um, was told that here comes Vartox. And Vart, uh, Vartok says, I'm going in, and I don't care what you do. Mm -hmm. Superman, no, you cannot. So, it's, um, I don't know, we don't see much of what he does. He's got some kind of, he wears these little... Vartox has rocket boots. No, they are not rocket no? boots. No? No. You, we see, see, he's not using uh, rocket boots. No, they're gas canisters. Okay. <laughs> okay. Get it right, man. All right, all right. <laughs> oh, so he, okay. This guy name is Sykes, who's a bad guy who shot the girl. Okay. In the robbery. And Vartox takes him out of the slammer. While he's talking to Lois Lane. Yeah. Man, Lois gets everywhere. Oh, we got some cool... Cool house ad. Yeah. Uh, advertising, uh... Still, only 20 cents. The all-new, and this is just books DC's got out. They've got Ghosts, Sergeant Rock, Commandy, The Witching Hour, OMAC, the One-Man Army Corps, 
uh, Star Spangled uh, War featuring the Unknown Soldier, the Swamp Thing, and Jonah Hex from Weird Western Tales. Lots yeah. of cool stuff, and none of these are superhero books. Yeah, Kamandi looks cool as Big Orca. Yeah, I remember reading I'm that issue. Well. It's a good one. And it's, it's oh, I guess Old Mac is a superhero book, but you know it's different, and it's Kirby. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but anyway, back to the to this. All Superman right, so story. he gets him out, and here comes Superman, and they start fighting. Because mm -hmm. Superman cannot allow him to take out a. Um, he can't just take a guy to another planet for justice. That doesn't work. Right. So. So Superman uses Kryptonian judo. And, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, um, <laughs> Vortox uses hyperchargers and blasts his chest, but it doesn't really kill him, but it, it slows him down so he can take his... But the hyperchargers go all over the place. And yeah. They, they ricochet, and one of them kills Lois Lane. Then we find out it was an imaginary story. <laughs> wow. And you're just thinking, well, this is what happened if I went down there. So he has to come up with a different plan. And then here comes chapter two of where it really goes. And the mission begins. Yeah. Oh, I thought it already had. But right? here it comes. See, this is another one of those bait and switches. Mm -hmm. In the 70s, you're led to believe, oh, here's going to be a new villain in Superman's rogues gallery. And it's not. things are not really what they seem. Mm -hmm. We got this the same thing with Valdemar of the Flame. The Viking. Yeah. He wasn't really an enemy. He was just a guy right. who Superman had to, you know, straighten yeah. out. Mm -hmm. So. All right. Um, let's see. So, um, Clark and Norris are driving along, and um, the psych, the bad guy, has been let out of prison because he had a really cool lawyer. <laughs> or slimy like lawyer. Yeah. But yeah. But um, and then we see four talks. Um, Behind him, yeah. talking to him. Uh, his brother paid the lawyer, and he really hates that he had to do so. And it's right. like, this is the last time I'm done with you. Right. Which would really suck to have a bad someone in your family do something evil and bad. Sure. And I think we'll, you know, that the good brother, bad brother theme gets revisited throughout uh, literature, and mm -hmm. certainly in comics. Yeah. Okay, so a Vortex was talking to him. Hey, um, uh, he tells him to snap his fingers, and um, Sykes snaps his fingers, and there, oh, we're in a jewelry store, and he steals uh, jewelry. He steals this glowing diamond thing. Uh huh. What is it? It's kind of has even <sighs> doesn't know. So, so, so um. Vortox, uh, in disguise, says, you've always had this um, power. I just know how to give it to you. Okay. So they go back, and they steal that. Um, it's really happy. And then here's um, Judo again. It's Lois and Clark are having Judo lessons. Yeah. And Lois is kicking Clark's butt. Uh, of course. Yeah. And judo is kind of the lamest of all the... Um, Do you think so? Yeah. I mean, not in real, but in... Popper culture. Oh, okay. judo is a fine martial art, but it, it's 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 all throws. It's not like kicks and punches and like you know butt kicking. It's all just using someone's weight against them. Yeah, I mean you don't grab someone's eye out and then yeah, you put your hand through their chest and grab their heart and, <laughs> and hold it in front of their face while I was still beating. You know, nothing cool like that. You yeah, Sonny Chiba would never use judo. Yeah. That's Sunny Chiba type stuff. So, anyway. So, Clark has to lose on purpose. Yeah. And it's just embarrassing. And then he notices that this, um, Sykes has got this diamond. So, it must be hard to look through x ray vision and everything. You have the whole city and there's looking around. And well, yeah. I mean, you can turn it on and off. It's not like he's constantly know, but, but, seeing through everything. Yeah, but. But, but what? Uh, but he, he does his. Uh, oh, he does a spot check of Frank Sykes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so he just looked there. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah. Mm. So he notices that Frank has this diamond. So he goes over there. Okay. And um, <coughs> Sykes is told by Vortox that the gem is worthless on Earth, but it's priceless on his planet. Right. So you need to come with me to my planet. Ah. And here's Superman. Yipes is Superman. I say that all the time. Yeah. 
Let's see. Um. So what is what is happening here? Superman it, it throws um, Sykes into the ceiling. Yeah, yeah, I forgot this part. Yeah, and then they make um. Then Sykes makes uh, turns around really fast, and then makes Superman his corkscrew into through the building into the ground. Weird, but it's really. Vartox doing that, right? Right. Okay. Oh, it's a cool scene of um, four people's apartments, and they're all shocked. Like <laughs> Superman's just going through them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's kind of cool. Yeah. So, um, so, oh, so Sykes says, oh, I'll go to your planet. So they go up. Superman sees them, and he follows them. And they're about to crash into a... Um, what is this? Asteroid a, or something? A fragment of a white dwarf star in, and it's inside his teleport beam. Hmm. So Superman goes, smashes the fragment. You know that should happen very often. Because that, that's... It's space is... Well, I guess there's a lot of space in space. Yeah. Hmm. Like Nevada. So yeah. There's a lot of nothing there. Okay. So, um... But then Superman... Um, Vortex expects Superman to chase that and fight but Superman bears off yeah so um they land in their city and they're on Vartox's world yeah okay. you know, I don't know what the name of this is I don't think it matters yeah so he arrests him for the murder of his wife yeah and um so I guess they have a trial I don't remember seeing a trial though I think they just kind of fast forward through that because yeah, that'd be interesting so what they do is they put a mask over Sykes, and mm -hmm. it says, oh, "I know that um, the um, joyous or the uh, Spiffanies." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, and Superman went to the uh, Spiffanies, and oh, there was nothing stolen, so mm -hmm. there's no crime. But Sykes had went of his own volition to Vartox's world. See, it was all the plan. He didn't extradite him. Sykes mm -hmm. had been paroled. All this stuff. So, but on Bartox's world, that jewel had the power to age Sykes. Like, no, no, no. no. What did it? Then explain it. The jewel is a, is a MacGuffin. There's, okay, there's, there's then. Any, okay, so they put this um, mask over Sykes. Yeah. And it ages him sixty years. Yeah. So now he's, I guess he's in his twenties. Now he's eighty and decrepit. Yeah. And he's taken back to Earth by so, Superman. Yeah. So. I guess it's still sixty years of your life, or do you, are you in the mask and it feels like sixty years, or just goes away in a second? I don't know. Yeah, but he definitely aged. It wasn't like a trick, right? So yeah. Superman takes him back, and um, hmm? that's that. And he has to wrap him in his cape so that he'll survive the vacuum of space and stuff. Yeah, I so, like that. Yeah, but now the guy, okay, is he is sight? Um He's not even um, eligible for Social Security, even though he is 80 years old. He is not. He hasn't been around for 60 years, so he cannot get Social Security. Correct. Hmm. Well, he's screwed. Oh yeah. well, he's a murderer. Yeah, I know. But it's kind of cool. Yeah. So there's all kinds of things to this because I think that's kind of lame. You know, like, really, ha -ha, he can't even get Social Security, and who's going to hire an 80 year old? Right. Okay. An 80 year old killer and all this stuff. Yeah. Like, He's probably 90, if you think about it. I don't know. He was probably at least 30. It could have been 19, but um, I don't know. I mean, who knows? But it was okay. It was okay. Yeah. Not bad, not bad. So, moving on. Um, we have Superman number 283, and the lead story is called Superman's Mystery Masquerade, written by Kerry Bates, penciled by Kurt Swan, and inked again by Bob Oxner. Okay, um, as Clark Kent would say, this is a job for Superman, but this is a job for my new secret identity. So, yeah, this is weird, but I uh, I found the story to be pretty fun. Yeah, um, so this Dr. Vant was saying that, um, talking to Lois Lane, Clark's supposed to be there, but he's late. Right, and Dr. Vant is in the space program. I don't know what I think he's just a millionaire scientist who wants to go to outer space or who wants man to and um, he is he talks about the future and he is right on target yeah 
and it's amazing because he's saying there's um the space race is over yeah and um we could be in um uh, by year 2000 we're shooting for the stars but really it's been nothing yeah i know it's kind of sad like that's i was i was thinking we'd have a space space by the year 2000 and all that stuff so, yeah know, 2001 space odyssey we thought that's going to happen yeah but nothing happened right and um the space shuttle uh, one blew up and they they retired it and that's it we don't even have a rocket the united states government does not have a rocket to go up in the space you know, to, that's to pretty people it's pretty so, lame Mm-hmm. Yeah. So private investors in Europe and stuff are working on you know the old yeah, uh, Mars and stuff like going that. to Mars. That'd be cool. Yeah. And and I was talking to my brother-in-law the other day, like, you know, the the people that get to Mars, they're still going to be living in tents and greenhouses for generations because it'll take decades to mm-hmm. terraform even just a few acres of Mars. You know, and really they what they need to bring. He was he was saying is they need to bring algae and and. Uh, uh, microscopic uh, something rather plankton uh, and all that stuff like, because yeah. that's big oxygen producers yeah there's a uh, series of books called Par- red oh. planet green planet blue planet yeah so I've always been intrigued yeah but anyway all right so Clark arrives late mm-hmm. and uh, as he does he um, let's see he sees something going on and he all right, he uses super ventriloquism. So there's this guy <laughs> standing out there, yeah. and he says, Hey, Lois, I got a hot tip for you. And Lois goes over there and makes a fool of herself. <laughs> oh, we got some cool house ass Shazam, World's Finest, Unexpected, Batman, Young Romance, Action Heroes. Uh, Superman unleashes the world's greatest action heroes. Mm, cool. And people we know. And the Justice League. But yeah, these are the the 100 page super spectaculars and they're already super spectacular they so. are so lois is <laughs> the guy is a lawyer he thinks that she is making moves on him mm-hmm. and gives his, and she's really ticked off so what's going on superman here is a ticking of a time bomb mm-hmm. isn't a time bomb use a clock how are you going to tell what's the difference between a clock and a time bomb because he's superman yeah so there are just silver chrome um, rocket or jet plane on top of the Rudd Aircraft Company, mm-hmm. and it shoots off. And then Superman's gotta um, catch it, and it's about to blow up. So he swirls around it to keep the pressure inside. Uh huh. He finds out all it is is fireworks. Huh? It's a fooly. Yeah. So. He thinks, well, that's what he thinks. It, it's not going to plot. So he gets his secret alter ego. Isn't Clark Kent his secret alter ego? He needs another secret is alter this ego. A, is, this, is this a secret secret alter ego or a secret alter alter ego? I don't know, Jeff. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay. So we see this new guy and his Chris. Um, what is it? Delgart? Is that his name? Delbart, I thought. Yeah. So he he's in this um, building, office building. He talks to some people. He goes and watches TV and drinks tea or is that coffee? Hmm. Really and he goes to sleep. And um, that's about it. He misses the um, WGBS news. Hmm. And he's really chew- um, being chewed out about it. So here comes. Another thing on top of a building shoots off in outer space. Mm-hmm. This one talks and uh, tape recorded message inside. Mm-hmm. So, oh, it's our Dr. Vant. Mm-hmm. So he's blackmailing Superman with his secret identity. Right. Oh, so but Vant discovered the fake secret ID. Mm-hmm. So, anyway, because he wants Superman to convince the world leaders to invest in the space program again. Okay. What he's going to do, he's going to have. Um, Let's see, Viking is going to land on Mars. Mm-hmm. And he's going to have, where they're going to land, he's going to put, have Superman put alien artifacts there. So they'll make people go in a space race to get there to meet the Martians. Mm. Which is really brilliant. I would have loved, you know, if I was a billionaire, I'd, I'd have something for that lunar mo- or All right. rover. But wait, here's the thing is, 
there are Martians. The Martian Manhunter. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, in DC Comics, there really are Martians. So, granted, most of them were wiped out in a war, but there's going to be artifacts there. But this guy doesn't know, because he hasn't been to Mars. Yeah. Um, and we know there's aliens, because everyone knows that Superman's an alien. Yeah. That's common knowledge in, yeah. the, in the DC comic world. Um, you would think, you know, and, and Superman could just help and put a bunch of rockets out of space, so like a space base and all that. So yeah. why are they doing that? I don't know. You'd be glad to help. Right. <laughs> He's Superman. That's the thing, though. Unlike the so silver much of, surfer. Right. <laughs> He's right. unhelpful, so. The thing is, so much of comic book superheroes, like, they would change the world forever. Mm -hmm. so if there was a Superman, yeah, whoa, everything would be so different. But we act. Most stories act as if everything is regular except for Superman, right? And it's just kind of in a fairly regular context. Obviously, there's super villains and super right. science, mm -hmm. but it's never the paradigm of how the world works doesn't change, and it would. And that would be interesting. And I think maybe the. the I mean, the maybe that's when we're trying to mess with that. Well, oh, yeah, I mean, and maybe that's just too meta, you know, to do your standard monthly comic. Yeah. Although it could be done, I think. Um, yeah. It'd be interesting if they, you know, uh, I don't know what would you call it, a comic book world, you know, or something. Or well, I don't think I need to give it a name. I would just write my yeah, comic people, line like think that. People would. Okay. Because you, you got to have things named. Right. Oh, okay. So he's okay. So Vance got him by the um, super short hairs, I guess. <laughs> he thinks. Yeah. So Superman takes Vance to Mars, and then he leaves him. So hey, <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. You can't but tell I, anybody my secret ID. Yeah. <sighs> so Vance freaking out. He's thinking yeah. I have limited oxygen, and there's a monster here. Yeah. And then he finds and he. he Runs and then hey, this is Mars Metropolis Mars Land. It's under construction. It's an amusement park. So Superman really pulled the, really, really tricked him good. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then the guy says, "Oh, well, I'm gonna go and confront Superman." His Chris Dybart or whatever secret ID. It was just some old lady, right? Who was out of town and for a couple he days. Does this after he sent um, letters to all the major news organizations? <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> so that's pretty great. Yeah, well, I enjoy that a lot. That was fun. So yeah, um, <laughs> as you know, I was kind of man. Is that how you want to do it? As your alter ego is go to bed and and, and uh, he, he could. It was send all someone, part of the plan, he baby. Could, he could send somebody filming him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but then if, if he does that, then someone else can do the same thing too. Yeah. So, it'll be, I don't know. So. And, oh boy, oh boy, oh, oh boy. Oh, here it is. It's Jeff's super fun time. In this in the backup story, it's called One of Our Imps is Missing. Written by Elliot S. Magan. Penciled by Kurt Swan. Inked by Bob Oxner. And, of course, it is a Mixia's Piddlick story. Yeah. Oh, I love these. Mm. Yeah. Oh, man. I'll take these over the private life of Clark Kent any day. Oh, or man. the fabulous World of Krypton. Both of those stink. Yeah, yeah. or anything. Actually, Mix is the best of the Supermans, I think. Really? I enjoy them more. It's just kind of it's more fun. People are just having a good time writing it mm -hmm. and drawing it and reading it. This okay. Is cool. This is one of the later mixes, so. It's, yeah, this is definitely Bronze Age, so. Yeah, it's kind of cool. So, so what's Mixia's Pitalik up to? Okay, so he's missing. This is what, um, and they they send a um, cop after him, and well, they don't send. So the cop um, uses Superman's diary and writes uh, something to hey, Mix, uh, yes, Pitalik is on Earth. All right. This was a cop in the fifth dimension. Right. Okay. So here, here is Mix, and he's making. Um, uh, He's making one car go into a boat and floating. He's making um, one have wings. wings. He has oh a beetle. Uh, folks on the beetle has beetle legs. <laughs> oh, it's cool as I'll get out. Um, right on. What is the other thing with a beetle? It's like I can't it's a motorcycle. 
And um, yeah, it's pretty darn cool. Right oh, on. one's being pulled by an ox. Hmm. It's loads of fun. Yeah. Oh, okay. So um, this is happening in Washington D.C. and um, so they call Superman, <laughs> and Superman runs over there, and these statues are turned of uh, uh, old um, senators and all that stuff is are turned into turned to uh, come alive. And then they like are interrupting things in Congress, and it's mm -hmm. really hilarious. Or in the Senate floor. Yeah, um, Daniel Webster. I think that's everybody's old favorite senator because he uses sure. Yeah, pro union, pro, and um, I think there's no he was honest as a day is long. Right on. Those are good qualities. And he's, he writes well. <laughs> yeah. And the dictionary great, guy. Short uh, story: Dan Devil and Daniel Webster. Yeah, that's a great one. I like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you won't see that about. You won't see a short story like that about any politician living today. I don't think. No, no. So, it's a different uh, art, different yeah, era. So Superman has to save one of the senators because he's too stupid to move. While there is a um, half a ton of granite is coming towards him to sit in this chair. Right. And and you know, Daniel Webster wants to sit on his dang chair. That's why. Mm -hmm. so, that's and, so there's a. Painting of you know the Washington Cross in the Delaware. Well, Mick just Piddlick makes it comes alive, and the water comes splashing into the room. Yeah, and the people are alive. And, hey, it's kind of hot and stuffy. Even, I didn't know in New Jersey was that hot and stuffy, even in December. <laughs> <laughs> so then, okay, so it floods. The, the whole building's flooded from mm -hmm. that painting. Ah, so he's looking at um. Who is he? Superman or Mixius Pilulik? Oh, so Mixius Pilulik is going to look to see what new devil tree he can perform, mm -hmm. and then he goes to the Lincoln Monument, and and uh, Lincoln rises up and he stretches and he um, puts holes in the wall, mm -hmm. and he starts walking, and he almost steps on somebody, mm. and then some guy who Abe was his hero. Stops and starts talking to the statue. Yeah, he's a senator from the home state of Illinois. Mm -hmm. And he says, I'm a senator from Illinois. And he says, do tell. How stands the union, my boy? So, he tells a joke. Um, it's, yeah. <clears throat> By Jenga must have rained this morning. The ground soft as a hog's belly at feeding time. <laughs> so, so, uh, so Mick says, well, so great about this guy? And Superman says, hey, he wrote to Gettysburg Address. He's... Um, with some great words. Why don't you read the words on this wall? Here you are. And it's the Gettysburg Address, and then it has Superman has altered part of it to say clips McCum whatever makes his piddle backwards. So he reads it aloud and goes back to the fifth dimension. Yeah. And uh, that's that's a good way to do it. I the McJust Piddle stories are fun. I always am impressed about the way they figure out a way to get him to say his name backwards. Because it'll be hard, you know. And I'm gonna read nothing. So you know Yeah. Uh, we're getting to say his name backwards. Like what? How? Yeah, or maybe he kind of wants to say it or some of that, or he's playing. I don't know. Or maybe he's not too serious. Maybe he's an imp, so yeah. He's maybe he's not too smart. I don't know. They're always fun. I love yeah. them. Love so them love. here's the thing on the imp subject. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you know, Superman has Mixius Pitlick, and Batman has Batmite. Which I never read, but I took an instant dislike to seeing it. So I yeah, Batmite's kind of dumb. But at least Batman, Batman is, he wants to help. Yeah. And he just gets in the way. Mm hmm Aquaman has an imp, too. I just learned this. No. Aquaman's imp is called Quisp. And he's like, um, like a... How do you spell that? Q-U-I-S-P. Because I think there was a Q-W-I-S-P serial, so I didn't know there's a... No, there's no connection. But anyway... Yeah, Quisp. But anyway, Quisp is like a, a water sprite or some crap like that. And he helps Aquaman, but also he is mischievous. So he's kind of a blend of, mm -hmm. of Batmite and Mixus Piddlick. But, um, yeah, that was a new thing. I didn't know about Quisp at all. Yeah. And, yeah. All right. Well, maybe we'll read it sometime. We, have, we read some Aquaman, but not very much. Not much. So... Let's talk about our next comic. All right, the Phantom Horseman, Horseman uh, Metropolis. That's right, from Superman number two eighty nine, and um, it's written by Carrie Bates, penciled by Kurt Swan, inked by Bob Oxner. 
Okay. Um, There's a Sin Banner. Yeah, there's some banner on his wife, and he's trying, he lost his gizmo, uh -huh. he's trying to find it, because there's a big uh, in, uh, inventor's get-together, and yeah. he, he promised he'd bring it, and he can't find it, and his wife's annoyed, why don't you just forget about it? Mm -hmm. And But he has a cool, he has a, a elevator with with um, compressed air, yeah. and he has a, a, a mechanical... Um, Pet rock. Oh, Put fun. Rock. Yeah, he's got all kinds of uh, wonders in his house mm -hmm. that are pretty cool. Yeah. Pretty cool. They're kind of Jetsons kind of inventions in his house. It's all kind of silly. Yeah. And she's annoyed at him because right. he doesn't give her as much attention. attention. So she starts watching the John Wayne movie. Mm -hmm. And so, oh, we go to. Let's see, is it Steve and, um, Steve Lombard, I think. Yeah. And Clark, and this girl, Candy. Mm-hmm. Mm, Candy Shapen, who's a cowgirl. Mm-hmm. Steve says, oh, I can ride this horse. And look, here's a police horse. And they tell him, don't do it. And the, the police horse just knocks him off. And all of a sudden, here is this, and it's strong, just a white blank. A, a right, but we get the shape of a fella... Uh, like a cavalryman riding a horse. And he's just riding on through Metropolis. Yeah. And Clark rolls underneath a bus to hide and then becomes Superman. Right. And then goes after the Phantom Horseman. Yeah. The Phantom Horseman runs through a wall and just destroys it. Mm-hmm. And so Superman's afraid that he's going to run into a bus, so he lifts the bus up and... Um, and it disappears because... The bus doesn't disappear. The Phantom Horseman the does. The Phantom Horseman does because the um, the wife turns mm -hmm. off the TV. Now, that's what we are meant to see. Yeah. So, you don't know. So, this inventor is worried that this is going to happen. And mm -hmm. then this is caused by someone who stole his gizmo. Yeah. His the invention. silhouette projector. Mm-hmm. Oh, Okay. No, it's made out. It's animated figure composed of solidified pro photons. Hmm. Okay. What's Sounds the made use up. of this? So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So his wife is back in the kitchen. Hey, I'm going to watch um, roller, roller derby. derby. And here comes this. I knew this is what's going to happen. No. Well, yeah, I guess we were told it's going to be Big Bertha, but mm -hmm. uh, a chunky woman is, is uh, roller skating down the. Yeah, uh, at this time, roller skating is pretty big, and then it yeah. kind of died out, and now it's big again. Yeah, the roller derby is kind of a thing that's kind of come and gone and come back again. I think in the 70s, there's was girl and guy. And there's it, a roller and disco now. and roller derby. Yeah. So. And now I think it's just girl roller disc, roller derby. I don't think there's yeah. any. Uh, yeah. I'm sure Rollerball was, the movie was playing off the roller derby trend right. in the 70s. So. Mm hmm yeah, it's it's an odd sport. Yeah, but I did watch it back in the day. Uh, anything with James Con, so he's all right by me, you know. Yeah, he is. Um. So, um, Superman. Okay, this is kind of clever. He goes to a junkyard. And he makes a oh okay. a treadmill. Yeah, an ultra uh, a solar powered ultra fast treadmill. Why is it powered? All I had to do is just to... Uh, the centrifugal force of rain. You know, I would think, or maybe she could go over it, but that's just... I don't know. I don't know. It had to be a certain speed or something. I yeah, so anyway, he is able to send her off into the stratosphere. And she disappears. Yeah. So, what so, goes on here? <laughs> okay. All right. So, this is great. This is cool. <laughs> There's some cool um, house ads. Yeah, Shazam and oh yeah, the there's Bible and, they got a big. I want to read sometime. Yeah, it's these a comic book version. I've read the Bible. Well, right. And these then, what this is a house ad is for the um, those big Treasury editions that were such a. Are those a, a big massive ones? Yeah. Oh God, and that's they're cool, but but the the oversized um, format is where do you how do you store this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's an house out of them or something. Well, like the that. the standard comic book form is geez, you could fold it up and put it in your back pocket. Uh -huh. You know, and that's kind of nice. Those uh, are so huge, it's like, 
well, it's great to look at that big page. They're mm -hmm. wonderful to read. But uh, I had a few, and I got rid of them just because... What you are going to do? You use them for a doormat? Or, you know, yeah, I mean, you, you need to get all of the treasuries and have a big box of them, you know? All right. You know, and maybe that's the thing. But this was trade paperbacks hadn't really happened yet. This was an experiment in format mm -hmm. at the time. And some of those were all new and 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 haven't been reprinted also. Yeah. Or they were reprints of classic stuff like Action Comics mm -hmm. number 1 or whatever. So, but anyway. Yeah. So, okay. So the uh, what is this called? The Metropolitan Revolutionary Army. <laughs> <laughs> yes, which is of course a a nod to the Symbionese Liber Liberation Army. Uh, the, the group that kidnapped Patty Hearst. Yeah. So there's this two or three guys yeah. with this girl, and he's um, and they said, "Don't do anything, or I'll shoot this girl." Uh huh. We, we, and and Superman says, "Any man who resorts to a trick that low is no gentleman," and punches them through the window. Ha <laughs> ha. But they were just playing up, trying to take advantage of the situation. They didn't have the device. Right. So. So then they, oh, they're watching. The, so revolutionaries like roller derby too. So, Who doesn't? Yeah. So then uh, Bertha, uh, it's big Bertha, is the roller derby queen. Okay. And he says, oh, my wife likes, what if she was watching TV at the same time? Mmm. So uh, Superman takes him home and then Superman grabs the antenna, which we see in the first page or something like that yeah. you're shown that the, the the device is the, the device looks like tv rabbit ears yeah which is not a thing people have anymore but mm -hmm. but used to i remember having rabbit ears and growing up in my home yeah so so his wife elaine is is mad because it's his 25th anniversary uh-huh they're in the 25th anniversary yeah so he goes to the inventor's thing inventor's thing and then he takes her out on a town because he had been playing on this for weeks. So we have a nice little story. And wah, wah. Everyone's happy. Yeah. And he's, got, and he's got a robot chauffeur. He looks really, really cool. Yeah. God, that's awesome. Man, I want a robot chauffeur. <laughs> I, I don't want the, I love the Fantastic Four's uh, robot secretary. I have not seen this. You so, will. I know where. <laughs> you will. She, from the, she just, she's like a robot on wheels mm -hmm. and like the upper torso looks like a person. I and she one. answers the phone and stuff. I don't remember her name, but hmm. anyway, I guess, it might be of, Roberta or something. A so lot of like bad that. guys come to Baxter Building, mm -hmm. so maybe they wanted a robot one, so they wouldn't have to worry about her. She gets scared. Yeah, that makes oh. sense. That really does. Just a robot. Hey. So we got one of those private life of Clark Kent stories. Uh. Okay, this but <laughs> this one's called "Right Down My Alley," and it's the uh, Daily Planet gang. Don't bowling or the GVS crew. All right, so they're talking about. Oh, well, hang on. Gotta, oh, let me get the credits ahead. real quick. Doesn't matter. Written, by, yes, it does. <laughs> Written by E. Nelson Bridwell. Penciled by Kurt Swan and inked by Jose Luis Garcia Lopez. Now you can say everything you want. The thing yeah. about Bobby King and crap. Yeah, um, Bobby King and uh, uh, no, Billy. Ch oh, Billy Bobby Jean King. Fisher. No, not, not Bobby, Bobby Fisher. Fisher. What's his? Uh, Bobby something. And Billy Jean King. They had this in that, the '70s. They had a um, tell uh, a famous hyped up tennis match, mm -hmm. and uh, I can't think of Bobby's last name. But he loses. Mm -hmm. Years later, we find out that he let her win. Did you know this? No. Yeah, but um, that's the reason. I mean, they were both tennis champs, and he was kind of past his prime, though, too. All right. Mm -hmm. But so. He could have said later that he let her win, but... That's true, too. But the facts are there are no women playing men in professional tennis. Right. And so... So... Men have more strength and all that, and they, they win. She wasn't exactly dainty. No. So I'll just put it that way. Oh, yeah. But, yeah. But, uh, so it was a really big event back then. Right. So they're talking about it, and it says, oh, uh, we'll... Uh, men and women, so they decide to have a bowling match. Mm -hmm. oh, this is and Lola Barnett and Lois and everybody are, the, are and playing Mark on the gals. Conway, secretary, and Melba Manton, uh, another top reporter, and, and 
Dave Stevens, Daily Planet columnist, people you've never seen before. But right. Steve Lombard's a yay, he's my favorite. He's your favorite guy to hate. Yeah. He's got this, like, that feathered douchebag 70s hair right now. Yeah. And it's terrible. But anyway. <clears throat> oh, man, he's got a great shirt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is all. Oh, man. So. So, so Superman is, is in the, the men, the, oh, what they call it, the uh, male show uh, league. Uh-huh. And, um. Clark is. Yeah. Superman isn't playing. Right. So that's the problem. Because oh, Clark Superman's doesn't look, always there. Right. So how do I not accidentally? How do I work against myself and not use my powers? Because some things are just you just they're not voluntary. And he doesn't want to. He, he wants the male chauvinists to have a, a be fair. Right. He wants that the, the women win. He wants it to be a fair thing and not. So this is a, and not this, him just blowing it. This on is a big problem for Superman. What's he that is do? true and. It seems like a, it's this. It's a minor thing, but it is a daily thing that he would probably be going through. Mm-hmm. So, what? Um, so he hypnotizes himself in order not to have um, to use his powers while which he's in the bowling game. Dangerous, you know. It's like, oh, we'll take the wheels off our only uh, fire truck and, and uh, something, you know. Yeah, you're, you're setting yourself up. I right. guess turn off the NORAD. Like, what do you do if Brainiac shows up? Yeah. You know, you're and screwed. kind of Brainiac does. And uh, the Mad Bomber, which there was a Mad Bomber at, sure. at the time. So, well, the great thing about the... Is there any other kind of bomber? Hmm. <laughs> There's the, a ground bomber? Um, I don't know what that is. Oh, he's um, the famous black uh, boxer. Um, oh, Oh, the black boxer, because there really weren't very many of those. Yeah, it's um, I'm um, messing with you. Of oh no, back then there weren't. Oh, okay. oh, yeah. so this was early on. Yeah, really early. It's, it's before Tom Hardy and um, Sugar Ray Leonard. No, no. God, sorry. So, I okay. don't know. I don't know enough about this stuff. Google it yourselves. <laughs> I'm too busy talking about this stuff. Okay. <laughs> okay. So let's get on with um, it. <laughs> so um. So he, okay, so the Mad Bomber, so mad he bombs a bowling alley. Woo! <laughs> so, uh, so, so, uh, ironically, okay, right before then, sorry, um, they're down 10 points or something like that, and Clark rolls a strike with the two, um, what is it called? It's, um, when you have the pins on the, uh, it's a split, a seven ten split, which is the worst thing to get. Right, it's really hard to, to do. Just staying near impossible to, to get take up the spare so on a seven ten split. I'm going to hypnotize you so you can do it, and so that I... undid Clark's hypnotism, and he was able to. No, 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 it didn't do anything. Oh, okay. But Clark accidentally got the seven ten. In. <laughs> I don't know, accidentally or on purpose. Uh, I think the ambiguity is perfectly fine. Yeah, actually, yeah, it is a little bit of ambiguity. If it's not forced or right, it's too. Oh man, forced so, ambiguity—that's the worst. Yeah, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> Jeff narrows his eyes at me. So okay, so, so the bad bomber attacks a bowling alley because that's the, the greatest place in the world to blow up something. You know, yeah, it's a bowling alley because you'll never hear. It. Oh, oh. <laughs> all right. Um, so Clark is stuck under. A, a big piece of timber, and he can't do anything because he, he hypnotized himself. So he hypnotizes Lois to have super strength and lift up. And right, yeah, which I don't make no. Uh, yeah, hmm. doesn't really fly. Kind of like Superman in this story. But um, <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, it, it's one of the better Private Life of Clark Kent. Yeah, yeah. So, hey, here's something different, not super heroic at all. Um, from Charlton Comics, we have I Love You, number 129. And uh, this is the second to last issue of the series. Oh. Um, and actually, this only ran for about half a dozen issues. that They just continued the numbering from another series. Mm-hmm. And it's ent- entire every story in this, it's a, it's a total reprint of... Um, of Just Married, number uh, 113. This is 1980, and at this point, Charlton is doing all reprints. After 1976, they just reprinted stuff that they had. Weird. 
okay, that's in inventory. So strange. <laughs> but uh, you know, they were. It was like they're kind of like they're winding down, and and Charlton was kind of on their last legs that's at this point. Sad. Yeah, I'm always, it's always sad to me when a company goes under, yeah. unless they're really vile. But I don't know. It's Charlton just, is so interesting. I've read so much stuff learning about mm -hmm. Charlton this year. Um, uh, a totally unique publisher in comics, and they mm -hmm. could have been an industry leader had they chose to, yeah. had, had the upper management cared. But um, that's another story. Um, Charlton Comics has actually been revived by the fans, and there's the Charlton Neo brand, oh. and there's a, a whole line of books that are coming out now. That's interesting. Yes, and mm -hmm. um, they're going to have, it's going to be, it's, I think it's all anthology stuff. They're going to have some superheroes ones I think that are either new or in public domain, and there's going to be a western, a horror book, a science fiction book, it's and a romance book, and and there's other stuff in the, in the works. So Charlton has risen from the ashes. A new romance that's going to be interesting. Yeah, because okay. these are cornball and yeah, but they're fun. I yes. Like. So the lead story is called Compromise, probably written by either Joe's, either by Joe Gill or um, Nicola Cuddy. And um, the art, actually, I think every, yeah, excuse me, uh, penciled by Charles Nicholas, inked by Vince Alasia. And I'll just let you go. Sorry. Okay. Let's see. Lynn um, loves this guy, um, mm -hmm. Cal, and she's a big city girl in California, and he's a country bumpkin, <laughs> and they fall in love. She's wearing a bikini. They're on the beach, and they they kiss. And that there's some discussion. Yeah. Um, let's see. Um, so they get married, and they go back to uh, her his hometown. Yeah, Hicksville, USA. Yeah, and, and all the girls in town are judging her for wearing such far out fashions. Well, yeah, she, it's not too bad. She's just wearing she, she's wearing a tank top in one thing, and she's wearing a. Um, a sleeveless dress and another, and mm -hmm. nothing big then, but it's kind of odd there. And mm -hmm. and people are the guys like watching her. The girls are really mad. Mm -hmm. So uh, she's got a problem, and and he works at a plumbing store, mm -hmm. and people are giving him grief, especially the women. Oh, this stuff's too modern for us. I don't like old fashioned. Mm -hmm. But you're, they're trying to get back at him for marrying this young girl. Mm -hmm. So, what's she going to do? So, she goes shopping, just like any woman. <laughs> okay. And so, she dresses prim and proper. And it doesn't look bad. That's sort of... And then... Um, and, she's, and he's worried that she changed for him and says, Hey, um... You go out and come back in, and she's dressed in the ba 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 boom uh, um, mm -hmm. this dress. So, you know, a lady in the streets, uh, a whore in the sheets. With the, uh, wow. You okay. ever heard that? I've heard it. I did, can't believe that you just used it. That's all. Well, this is exactly what it's kind of saying. Oh, okay. I'm not saying yay or nay. I'm just saying mm -hmm. that's supposedly the what men want. Hmm. So, um,. And so she compromises her her wardrobe and all that. And you know, she did the right thing. Yeah. Why? Rebels are usually irritating. And you go to a country, mm -hmm. and they, she goes into a country, or, mm -hmm. or a different country, but she, this is a different society. Sure. And they have morals and mores and culture. And to mm -hmm. flaunt them is rude. Flout them, yeah, yeah, but flout um, them, yeah, yeah, but so yeah, so she goes with how it is in this town she she lives in, but she'll yeah. still dress how she likes at home with right. her man. Mm -hmm. So and that's the compromise of the story. Yeah. Well, not bad. Um, not all traditions are good, right. but um, just to, to flout them. Um, yeah, for you know, and it's it's. And people will say, oh, this is horrible, but it's actually, I think she did the wise thing. It's practical. It's a pragmatic decision. Yeah. yeah. And she did, and she did need to do it for him because it was going to hurt his business. And unfortunately, that was the case. But, yeah. you it know, and as time goes by, she could probably, you know, the town will relax, yeah. just, you know, but. This is what's remarkable about this story. It's would not, this story, if they had the story 
And today. It, today. It, oh, she showed the town how to be open and minded and all that stuff. But, right. But even open minded people are closed minded about something. Sure. And, um, to dismiss someone else. I mean, I wouldn't. If you go to Saudi Arabia, you should dress appropriately. Yeah. Uh, or something yeah. like that. These people have a culture and it's rude and uncultured to go and. Uh, uh, it's insult them by not. No, I dig it. I get by, it. But you know, the, their culture could be bad, and you know, I don't wouldn't want to stone um, um, gays or anything like that. That would no, be wrong. It would. But, be. but yeah. Anyway. Hmm, okay. um, so the next one is sacred vow. Yes. Um, probably written by Joe Gill or Nicola Cuddy, um, but uh, penciled again by Charles Nicholas and inked by Vince Alicia. That classic Charlton team. You know, they were. They were. I mean, not that either of them were super great, but they did so much work together at Charlton. They're yeah. synonymous mm -hmm. with the company. So this is a problematical one. Okay. Okay, we have um, Gordy's married to this girl, uh -huh. and she's bored because he's a bookkeeper. Uh huh. And there's a um, there's an artist that lives in the apartment yeah, above them. He even has a scarf on, so you know he's cool. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, so she he said, "Oh, I need an emergency art, uh, model." So she's able to dress in a. One piece, speaking, um, one piece bathing suit. Uh huh. That's fine. She models for him. Mm hmm. And he gives her a fifty dollar check, written out to her husband. And Gordy um, doesn't like the guy at all. Gordy's so, the husband. Yeah. Okay. The boring husband. He doesn't like the guy because He's he just a... doesn't. So she doesn't give him the fifty dollar check. So. Okay. So she uh, next time she dresses like a Egypt, uh, Egypt, Greek goddess. Uh huh. And he steals a kiss. Uh -oh. And uh, she um, lets him do it for a little bit, and then he she stops it. Yeah. She cries, and she, Gordy comes and she, she tells him the whole story. Yeah. And he says, "Oh, you know, you know, it's been about three other girls there this week too. So yeah. he's a player." Yeah. Uh, so. And he's he's forgives her, and that's yeah. nice. And but and here is a problematic one. So they kiss. And I love you, Gordy. But if I weren't your wife, I could easily fall in love with Kevin. She says that in her. Is that the end it. of the story? Almost. The next one says, "One man always be plenty for me, Gordy." Um, so. Hmm. But uh, that's kind of well. It's kind of truthful, I guess. You could. Someone could fall for somebody else, but she decides to go with boring instead of. Well, oh, and she remembers that she's married, and she made a promise to love him and stuff. Right. So it's kind of important. Yeah, it, it kind of is. Yeah. So. All right. So the third story in this book and is called Bitter Memories. Um, no credit on the writing again, but you know most things at Charlton were written by Joe Gill, and then in the late seventies. Um, Nicola Cuddy wrote a lot of stuff too, but or excuse me, in the seventies, not the late seventies. But anyway, and um, Charles Nicholas penciled it, Vince Alicia inked it. Yeah. All right, these two girls, only two girls, just young couple. <laughs> God, man, look at the look at what she's wearing. Oh my God! <laughs> it's green check top with with a yellow pant uh, uh, shorts and with green checks on the pockets. Okay, oh, man, she's not seven. a fashionista. And she may have been at this time. Who knows? Who knows? They may have been. They definitely spent a, long, a lot of time on drawing women's fashions in these. They must have looked Because who do you think was buying these comics? Right. And so this is what... Other than me. <laughs> right. <sighs> oh, there's dirt on our, our ink spots, some of that. On her leg, so I thought, oh, she doesn't shave her legs. No, no, like, it's just the I Charlton's know. cheap printing process. I know, so. but that, that, but they gave me a start when I saw that. So right. This is going a whole different new direction, fortunately. You know, okay. Going. So they decide to get married because <laughs> they're in love. Hey, that's a good reason. Yeah. So it, um, I don't know how they. Oh, oh so she, she did using the nineteen-year-old sister's. Birth certificate. Yeah, she marries a guy that her father doesn't like, and they get married, but they're 
it can't last. And the father, they're on their honeymoon, and the father catches up with them. Yeah. And he's like, look, you can give this up or you can go to jail, son. Right. So, um, they said, they'll forget you. And so she, six years, yeah. six years, she becomes a nurse. And she doesn't go with anybody. And uh, she's a good nurse, but if you're not, a, if you're not sick or injured, she ain't going to uh, look at you twice. Right. And he um, finds her, and they talk, and she kind of says, oh, it's over, and all this. But he's he's got this super cool job for an oil company in South America. And now he's got a mustache. Yeah. But, and, uh, so, but they became adults, and then they got back together after all that time. Yeah. So he never, didn't forget her like her, her father had said. Yeah, and her father's not going to be knocking on the door, so he's probably happy now. But yeah. his father was right. 17 is too young to get married. It is. To a love Now, this adds... Legally, too. But. I know, but it's sad that, like, oh, they had, you know, loveless lives until they reunited years later. Mm -hmm. But it's... There's a good moral in this story. It's a good lesson, and it's a true-to-life one. Mm -hmm. You know, so... And there's a one-pager that's lasting in here. It's called A Strange, a Strange Kiss. And I recognize this artist, but it's not credited. Hmm. So... So who do you think it is? I just think it. Uh, I just recognize it from doing other one pagers at Charlton. I don't know the name of the artist. So. Okay, so this guy and a girl got in an argument, and um, so they, hey, let's go to masquerade party. Her friend, her mm -hmm. female friend, says, and here's this guy dressing like a devil, and he kisses her, and it's old. Oh, it's the boyfriend she was mad at. Yeah, yeah. And now she's not mad at him. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> so. Oh well. Yeah. So. Uh. <laughs> that's that. Yeah, that's that. So I always enjoy these romance comics. They're I do just... too. They look at a different culture and or a um, different time. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, the past is a different country. Yeah. So yeah. I don't have anything. No sign off today. No, sorry. That's fine. I'm going to end the show abruptly. <laughs> Bye.